Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. We also have an awesome Facebook community at Daily Bible Podcasts, so search for us there. Also, we have new material that we're posting on Instagram and Facebook because it, like, took a minute. (laughs) Okay, we're recording the podcast. Oh, wait, maybe we should post more on social media about our podcast. So (laughs) So that is the way the world goes these days. That that is the way the world goes. So, yeah. So my wonderful but, daughter-in-law is helping me post stuff on Instagram and Facebook for us. And she's doing a great job. She's and it is job. some fun new material. So go check it out. Okay, so today we are in Joshua. We are crossing the river. It's so exciting. So we are reading, we read today Joshua 3, 4, 5, and 6. And it is, I cannot even imagine. I mean, it's a Today is a day, it's a big day in the history of of Israel. Like I said before, they are crossing the Jordan River. So let's let's step back, let's set the stage again. We have hundreds of thousands of people here. Like this isn't just a few people crossing the river. This isn't just a football team crossing the river. This is like beyond a whole stadium, even more than that. But this is so many people. They've been camping and wandering for many, many years. And again, I just want to take a look at that number of people because it's going to take a lot of organization. We've already Mm -hmm. seen how God has organized them and given them instructions, organizing the camps. There, it just there's a lot of details that need to happen to get this number of people from point A to point B, let alone crossing a river. And they're crossing the river, the Jordan River, right across from Jericho. And they're crossing in the spring of the year. So, you know, that's when they're crossing is the spring of the year. And this is when the river is at the highest stage. So why would God choose to send them across at the spring of the year when the river is at the highest stage, because normally it's about a hundred feet uh, across and probably about three to 10 feet deep. So to give you a little context here, in 1854, an expert swimmer was unable to make it across the river Jordan near Jericho because the river was too wide and the current was too strong. So Just think about that. When you're at flood stage, when a river's at flood stage, Mm -hmm. it's not just a trickling little brook. It actually is a roaring river and lots of water is like rushing down there. So that's just to give you a little context for where the Israelites are are passing today. That's not a little little creek or as they say in the South, crick. That's not a crick. That's not a crick. (laughs) That's not a a let every, we might get our feet wet sort of thing. You can hop across the stones. Mm -hmm. This was, this was a pretty big river. And also, just so you know, you give you context where we are and everything. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. So that helps us understand a little bit and, and put us into, you know, just the history of the Bible. So the Israelites officers have gone through the camp with instructions to follow the Ark of the Covenant, and they want the Ark of the Covenant, they want the people to stay about a half a mile behind the Ark of the Covenant. And Joshua had told the people, like before they started this march, he had said, purify yourself for tomorrow, the Lord will do great wonders among you. So... Do great wonders that had to have placed some excitement in the hearts of the Israelites. That had to have. So in the morning, the priests began moving the ark and they went ahead of the people. And God promises Joshua here, he says he will begin to make him a great leader in the eyes of the Israelites. He says, They will know that I am with you just as I was with Moses. 
Those are some, that's a big promise because as we talked about, as we've talked about the last couple of weeks, Moses is an incredible leader and he's yeah. incredible in the fact that he had this deep relationship with God. And so now he's sort of passing that on to Joshua. It's, that's cool. Okay. Let's get back to the Jordan river because this is exciting. And so as soon, remember, we've got the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant. As soon as the priest's feet touched the Jordan River, the flow of the river was cut off upstream and the river stood up like a wall. So think Red Sea. The Israelites crossed on dry land. It's just like, stop there. Like this is this is a huge. I want an miracle. instant replay like that. That just think how high it must have piled up because it's flowing mm-hmm. and it's three to ten feet deep. I mean, that's a lot of wall. How high would that go? I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing. It is amazing, and I think I don't think that learning this at for as a kid, I really grasp it. I don't know that you can grasp some of these mm-hmm. things, mm-hmm. but taking time to go through it in the last couple of years, I'm just like, wow, this, this is incredible. Again, dry land, like the Red Sea, but different in a way. And, oh, it's just, okay. Okay. Let's move on from there. Cause, cause we still have more <laughs> exciting things to, to find. Okay. Once the Israelites crossed uh, the Jordan, Joshua chose one man from each tribe to collect a large stone from the Jordan river. One for each tribe of Israel, and they built a memorial. And then Joshua set up another pile of stones in the middle of the Jordan, the stones of remembrance. And then God made Joshua a great leader in the eyes of the people, and they revered him like they did Moses. And again, that is just, that's really cool. And then we see Israel reestablishes covenant ceremonies and my question was, and I haven't found this answer, so maybe you do, Trisha, or maybe we have a friend in Facebook who Someone, has... You could tell us. Okay. Yeah. The question is, I guess I should have gotten there. My question was, <laughs> why was it stopped? Why why was circumcision stopped in the wilderness for yeah. those 40 years? We also see that manna didn't appear on the land in the mornings. They ate from the crops. You had that had to have been another. I mean, we're we're seeing all kinds of really cool things. And I'm just thinking, did someone's head explode with watching these cool things happen? Because it's like, whoa, how could you ever forget God's faithfulness as walking through this season right here? And and then we see that before the fall of Jericho, the Lord's commander confronts Joshua. Like the Lord's commander confronts Joshua, like we saw at the beginning of Moses' leadership. And Mm -hmm. Joshua is told, take off your sandals for the place you are standing is holy ground. And that was told to Moses too. So there's just so many correlations between Joshua and Moses. It's so cool. And then finally, we read about the fall of Jericho. And this is a story that many of us have memorized from Sunday school. But now that we're adults, just think through it and meditate on it. And maybe like, I don't know. I mean, imagine the noise from all these people. Imagine we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people here and they're marching around the wall and they're marching around the wall and they're marching around the wall. I mean, just imagine when, when, when they're commanded to shout what that sound was like. And then imagine Rahab. She's truly coming to know God and see his ways, like see his ways, see Mm -hmm. him act. And then imagine the Israelites seeing yet another miracle from God. I'm just like, again, to live through these four chapters had to have been so cool. I I think I need to like run up to one of the Israelites in heaven going, what was that like? What was it like? I mean, and okay. So you mentioned like, imagine the noise when they finally did shout uh-huh. When I was listening, it said, uh, you know, not uh, Joshua said, don't say a word. And I'm like, how did they go that many days without saying a word? Because, again, I have a lot of children and I would be like, don't say a word. I just want five minutes peace. We're in the car. I'm like, give mm-hmm. me five minutes, people. Oh, no. It's like 30 seconds later. Someone's doing something, saying something, making a noise for days. They did not yeah. make a noise. That was amazing. 
And there are so many, I mean, this is exciting. Like we're getting excited as we're talking about this because Mm -hmm. there's so many cool things, but let's go back. You mentioned it, the commander of the Lord's army. Mm -hmm. Um, But it took the people's obedience to open the door for his arrival. So let's think about this. So there was Joshua and they were near Jericho and he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with his sword that was drawn and Joshua went up to him and said, are you for us or for our enemies? Mm-hmm. Neither, he replied. But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals, like you mentioned, for the place you're standing is holy ground. And so Joshua did. Now, this is another Christology Um, which is another way to identify Jesus as the commander of the Lord's army. Now, some say it could be an angel. Some say it's Jesus. But the important thing to remember is that the commander presents, represents the Lord's presence and his authority. And Jesus, or Joshua, sorry, responded with reverence and obedience. So, I mean, I I do, it could be totally Jesus standing there because Joshua responded. This is holy ground. Mm -hmm. Um, And the, but the Lord, didn't appear as this commander until after they consecrated themselves and their bodies. Mm -hmm. So their hearts were ready to take fight and they knew that their enemies were fearful of them. This is all from chapter five. They renewed the right of circumstances. They renewed the right of circumcision, which you mentioned. They observed the Passover in this chapter. They ate of the produce of the land. And then the captain of the Lord's army showed up. So, Also, it doesn't seem logical, like if you're just going on pure logic, to circumcise all the men right before you get ready to fight. (laughs) So it reminded me when we were reading in Genesis 34, when Levi and Simeon told the men of Shechem to circumcise themselves. Remember, they said, we'll marry your daughters. You can marry our sister, you know. And then it said, all the men who went out of the gate agreed with Hamar and his son Shechem, and every male was circumcised. And three days later, while all of them were still in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords and attacked the unsuspecting city, killing every male. So this weakened the whole community. So they're getting ready to go to battle. And God's like, let's everyone be circumcised. (laughs) They knew this story. They Mm -hmm. knew it would weaken them, but they had to, again, consecrate themselves for what God was asking them to do. So they believed, they obeyed, Mm -hmm. they observed, they accepted the food of the land, and then God showed up in a new way. So I think so many times we could jump ahead to like, oh, look at the army showed up and then they marched around and the walls fell, but they had to prepare themselves for God to do his work. Mm Mm-hmm. They did. And remember that because they did that, they ended up in the Heroes Hall of Fame in Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. By faith. Mm -hmm. By faith. Well, the word of the day is march. It's to to march. The definition for march is to move in a direct, purposeful manner. And Joshua gave the command to the people to march around the town of Jericho. They marched, even though they weren't sure how this would work. You had to have known that there were some (laughs) Israelites that were like, what? What? Like, what? We're walking? We're walking in order? We're... They and they marched not knowing the exact outcome. You know that some of them were like, This doesn't make any sense. How is this going to happen? Like, do we have to pull out our swords? Like, how is this going to happen? But they marched because God, through Joshua, told them to. They marched, they were following their orders. Yeah. And the, the cool thing is, He didn't just give them orders. The commander of the Lord's army was there to go before them. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just goes to show me like God shows up when we need him. And he shows up again when our hearts are prepared. So Mm -hmm. is it time to march? Are you preparing your heart? This is the questions Mm -hmm. I was asking myself. I always try to like, okay, what does this have to do 
with me. So we need to believe what God says about our victory. And we need to obey the mandates he's given us. We need to observe and celebrate with the new seasons. We need to accept the gifts he's given us and God will show up. We have to repair our hearts. Um, You know, for me, again, starting this podcast was that um, act of faith. There was no room. Yet I believed God would work. I mentioned that before. And so far this year, I had a book release, um, Beyond the Gray Mountains. Then I'm days away from finishing a novel that I'm writing my, with my son, Nathan. Um, you know, mm. my book's due tomorrow and I'm recording <laughs> with Michelle. <laughs> I have so much to do. But no, by faith, by faith, mm-hmm. um, I'm doing what God asked me to do. And this year, you know, my stepdad passed away. I wasn't planning with my mom living with me. Like there's been challenges, but also God has opened amazing doors. Like I can't go into details because nothing's finalized, but like with media, we'll just say media, fun, cool Mm. stuff with my books. And it's like, God is saying, um, you're doing what I asked you to do. So Mm -hmm. I will, I will take care of these things. And if I would have actively went to Hollywood, that's a little bit more of a hint because nothing's finalized, but I could have taken years and years to knock on doors and mm. nothing would happen. And God's like, Hey, how about this? This, this could be fun. And like, I, it's again, the walls are falling down in places because I feel like I'm just walking where God yeah. asked me to. And Michelle, we're just marching. We're just marching where God asked us to, and he's going to take care of everything for us. Mm-hmm. He will, you know, and as, as we're talking about marching, I can't help but think of, the march around Jericho from Rahab's position in, mm. in watching you had, I mean, she, mm. I, she was starting to know this God. She was starting to know the God of the Israelites who she had heard rumors of and who she had heard of. But now, now as she's watching the Israelites march, she's starting to realize number one, she's seeing their faith in their God She's starting to have a different kind of, probably a deeper faith in this God by watching the march. And, you know, remember her home had a window on the outside wall of the city. So she could watch what was truly going on. And, and so I'm just thinking there are so many people who have that vantage point of watching us as we march. So Trisha, as you're watch as you're marching through all these new seasons and all these exciting things that are that God is putting before you, there are people who are watching mm-hmm. you. Just like my new season of a new marriage, there are people who are watching who are watching me. And and so I have to march faithfully. I'm not always going to get it right, but I have to march faithfully and I have to keep my head up and go, God is my God and he will supply all my needs and he will be there every step of the way. And I can't help but think that when Jericho fell, like all of Rahab's chains that had been holding her back broke and she was Mm -hmm. able to march right out of that city. You know that that, I mean, that just had to be, I would love to watch a a movie on her life because you know she had to just been able to go, whoop, you know, kind of like shaking her head, casting her arms off to the side. And she's like, I'm done with that. I'm marching into a new life. I'm marching into freedom. I love that. I love that so much. And I love that, you know, they weren't strolling. They weren't. You know, they weren't, they didn't like walk a little bit and take a break. And then they were marching. This was a fight that God was going to fight for them. Um, But they still had to march. They still had to, they still had to put on their boots and walk around and wait for the Lord to do his work. Oh, so good. So I think we need prayer about this. Michelle. I think you're right. Would you like to pray for us? I would love to. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, your word. We thank you for these four chapters that we have read today and just the excitement of seeing you work in such incredible, mind-blowing ways. And Father, just as we go about our work today, I pray that you give us strength, that you give us what you gave Joshua, and you give us courage and um 
Lord, that you give us that courage not to be afraid when we are marching into new seasons of life, marching into um, what you are calling us to do. God, give us courage. Give us, give us courage to stand against the tide. And um, Father, help us, help us to march in a way that is worthy of you and that honors you and glorifies you. We thank you, Father. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that in our show notes, and you can also find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. And tomorrow we are reading more of Joshua. So you're going to start off with Joshua Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. Then we're going to move into 1 Chronicles 2, verse 7. Then back to Joshua 7, verse 2 through 26. And then Joshua 8 and 9. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.